Okay, there you go. Thank you guys, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for this 10 minutes, I truly appreciate it. Members, guests, welcome to everybody. So my name is David Bryson. I am with the 10 minute speaker. I am with uh, Sparkle Time Window Washing. It is co-owned by my beautiful fiance, Anais, who most of you have met or hopefully will stop by and say hi to afterwards. So you're probably asking yourself the question, who grows up and dreams of owning a window washing company? Well, I certainly did not. So I'm gonna take you a little through my, my life story. I grew up in a suburb of Chicago, grainy picture at best. That's my mom, still alive, Dorothy on the left. My Dad George and a squirrely little dog named Midnight who was not sitting for that picture. That is me showing my skateboarding prowess, riding two at the same time. And if you remember, I had the red tough skins on of the day. Anybody remember those from Sears? They were awesome. So this is my family. They, uh, my mom and dad, they had their 50th wedding anniversary just a couple years ago and they took me and my sister on an Alaskan cruise, which was absolutely wonderful. So, graduated from high school, decided to go to Indiana University, which as everybody knows, is the most beautiful campus in the whole Big Ten. Go IU, fight, 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 our rivals, Purdue, that's like you ASU people and U of A. So, uh, I went to IU to be a business major and uh, came out with an acting degree. Business didn't sit so, too well, so after I graduated, I moved to Los Angeles seeking fame and fortune. On the left is one of my early headshots where I was young and pretty, well, young anyways. Uh, two and a half years later, I was sleeping out of my car and gambling in Vegas for rent money. After that, I moved to Chicago for three years where I wrote a book called The Starving Actor's Guide to Starving. Chronicled my young, dumb days as an actor, which I absolutely excelled at. If I said A, you would be much better off doing Z. Didn't get much play on it, but when I moved to New York City, I got an excerpt of it published in Entertainment Weekly. Hustled that around, they did a wonderful photo shoot for me, and it's hard to believe that was almost 20 years ago, how quickly it goes. So, coming out of New York City, I got cast as a sports broadcaster in London, England. That is my co-host, Jake Humphreys, who still works for the BBC. Sitting between us is the FA Cup, which if anybody knows anything about English soccer, that is the premier coveted trophy in all of England. There you go. So that's it on stage. After that, it was back to Los Angeles for version 2.0. <laughs> Here we go again. So I got married got divorced, got married again. One of the highlights of the marriage was not the marriage itself, but was a couple medical mission trips where I went to Sierra Leone, West Africa. And if anybody ever has a chance to go on these trips, I highly recommend it. That's me and my buddy Joel. He is sporting full African garb, which I absolutely love. On the right is people waiting for our clinic. And we weren't doing major surgeries or anything. It was just more like a physical and we'd give you some antibiotics. But for most people in this little town called Lunsar, Sierra Leone, this was the only doctor they would ever see in their whole lifetime. So even if we didn't heal their bodies forever, at least we hopefully gave them some hope that lasts a lifetime. After that, I did a, an orphanage trip to Cambodia. So if anybody wants to lose weight, they can just go to Cambodia or Sierra Leone and you're gonna sweat out a lot in, uh, in seven days. And the most rewarding thing about that was the hugs from the orphan kids. Those were absolutely priceless. So, got divorced, but adopted uh, my little pocket pit bull, Little Mo. Hashtag best dog ever. So she's just a joy to have around and uh, truly just adds so much to my life. Then after that, I met the love of my life, Inez. And uh, we met online. We've been together about two and a half years and we just have a wonderful time together. And not long after we met, we started traveling to Scottsdale to visit my parents who snowbird out here. And uh, she said, would I ever consider moving to Arizona? And I was like, yep, I'd be glad to do it. So uh, she had lived in LA 25 years. I'd lived there 18 and we were like, it's time for a change. So we were more than ready. So goodbye LA, hello Scottsdale. So things we like to do here, go hiking. Little Mo likes to hike, but sometimes she gets tired and daddy needs to help her out a little bit. She's a good girl. We love to go biking up and down the canal in Scottsdale, Hayden Road, all a lot of fun. We love traveling. Picture on the left is in a beautiful restaurant overlooking the Eiffel Tower where we went last year. We got engaged in London and then it was a London and Paris trip. That was part of our Paris trip. And then this spring we were lucky enough to get a quick trip to Austria to visit some of her cousins who were uh, living in Vienna. 
like everybody else here, we love eating and drinking. Uh, as Eddie alluded to, I love podcasting as well, another thing that uh, I like to do. And then at the end of the day, love to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> but, you know, that never works out as planned. As I mentioned, Anais is a photographer, so show, she's always like, can you help me with some lighting tests? And I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to dress up and try to look pretty. But she tries to make me look pretty, but finally I got a picture I was happy with. Where's that picture? There. <laughs> So it all, it all worked out well. So on to Sparkle Time window washing. When we moved here, we knew we wanted to be small business owners. We had both worked for other people for a long amount of time. And we said, what kind of business can we buy? We looked at franchises, mom and pop businesses, this and that. And believe it or not, we settled on a window washing company. Had great room for growth, had a revenue model in place. So we're like, hey, let's go for it. So at Sparkle Time, as you've heard me say multitude of times, we do commercial, we do residential. Let's see if we're back, there we go. Commercial, the gentleman on the left here, he's doing the Harley building up on Hayden Road. Gentleman in the center, he's doing uh, the Renaissance Hotel in Glendale. And the gentleman on the right, he's doing Loop Jeans on North Scottsdale Road. Residential, some examples are condos. In the center, a typical Paradise Valley, Fountain Hills home. And then on the right, if people request, we'll clean their wine cellars as well. So there's always a number of challenges that present itself with window washing. I thought window washing would be easy, that you just show up, you know, I thought it was just a spray bottle with some paper, but I was wrong. It's really a, it's a trade and it's a skill set that thankfully the gentlemen I employ have. Perfect example is that wrought iron door on the left, the glass behind it. If it's older construction, there's no hinge on that wrought iron. So you have to have the squeegees and the skill and the expertise to get behind it, to clean that glass. On the right, that would be somebody's patio where it's just, you know, sort of second story work and you just have to have the right ladders or the right poles. Other challenges in Arizona, you know, we have hard water, we have haboobs, we have monsoons, we have houses built on hills. So there's always something going on and you guys are all small business owners. It's just problem solving on a daily basis. The guy on the left, he's at Midwestern University. He's about 12 feet above the ground, if you can see it. And he has to navigate between airplane hangar wire and poles to try to clean the glass up there. And this is a house we're going to do in Fountain Hills, where as you can see, they have sort of second story recessed lighting, and the house was just built. So I can't imagine that lady wants our ladder marks on her wall. So you always have to be very conscientious of how you're attacking a job. So for my lowest common denominator for good referrals are made or janitorial cleaning companies, construction companies, usually home construction companies, painters, realtors, property management companies, and your neighbor. Through a lady I met at our condo, she's a VP of a janitorial company. They have the contract for Mastro City Hall. So we got that. We do Mastro's every two weeks. We also do Midwestern University got them through a janitorial company. So those are a huge referral source for me. So if you know anybody there, it's beyond the skill set of most of the cleaning companies that, uh, that work at these places. Also construction cleans. We do, uh, we do a lot of those. Perfect example, if you can see the Sierra Pacific label in the window, when a house is built, there's all those labels in there and they have to be steel wooled off or they have to be scraped off with a razor blade without scratching the window. So that's where the skill set comes into play. So any new home builders, we love to meet them. We also love to meet, uh, like I said, property management companies. We work hand in hand with a bunch of people like Ken who do what they do, manage rental properties but who I really want to meet. And I think we all joined BNI because we want to take our businesses to the next level. And a total next level referral for me would be a property manager, and I know they're out there, who manage 80 to 120 medical office buildings in the Phoenix area. That would be a game changer for Sparkle Time. So I want to thank everybody for all the referrals they've given me, all the trust that you've placed in me up to this point. I truly appreciate it. It really does mean the world to me and I hope I can give back to you more than you've given to me and... That's all. <laughs>